What is up, everybody? This is Alex and Sam, once again, with another episode of the EOT News Flash, and welcome to our Icoria Limited set review! <sighs> the crowd goes wild. Or only half the crowd goes wild, but that's okay. <laughs> You've got enough cheer for both of us. I do, I do. Over, overly enthusiastic about most things in life. But anyway, anyway, we are here to go through all of the cards in Ikoria from a limited perspective. We're ignoring standard implications, modern, vintage, commander, all that nonsense. We're putting that to the side because obviously the release date on Arena and Magic Online is this weekend when you can actually play the cards for the first time. Um, there's actually a, what is it called? A sneak peek event that's going on tomorrow? Starting um, tomorrow? It's early access stream event. Early access stream event, yes. I think uh, I have a couple of friends who are actually playing in it as well. So you can find that over on Twitch. Um, but beyond all that, we're going to be going through all the cards here um, from a limited perspective. So once you guys start drafting on Arena, um, then at your, hopefully, your in store pre release event, um, you'll have a little bit more knowledge. And as we always know, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so if you've not watched one of these before, uh, we operate on a four-point scale. Uh, ones being the cards you should never play. They are other garbage, draft chaff to the max. Uh, the twos are the cards that will usually make your deck. They are your more borderline filler. A, a majority of your limited decks will be made up of those cards. Your threes are the more powerful cards. Typically, these are your gold signpost uncommons, your more sort of unconditional removal spells, and the fours are going to be the absolute bombs that will pull you in a pack. You open, a, open up a pack and draft, and you see a planeswalker, and you see a mythic rare. That's where you go with those. Um, we also have cards in the S for sideboard category, which will be the ones you bring in if your opponent presents you with a specific threat that you could not deal with under what would be considered normal deck building constraints. And then your Bs are your build around cards, which require you to build your deck in such a fashion to take full advantage of the card. Um, yeah, so Sam's gonna read these bad boys off, bad boys and bad girls. And uh, I'm gonna give a quick little rundown on my thoughts on them, kind of give you an idea of what deck the, the card is looking to go into, as especially in the past couple of years, magic design for Limited had, had kind of the, the delta between a bad card and a good card is closed considerably. So you can't just say contextually, well, this is a two and so is this, and think that that is equal in some respect. So I'll give some context where it's, where it's relevant, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. So, uh, Samantha, what is our first card in white? <laughs> <laughs> Blade Banish. Oh, sorry, is that Banish? Banish? Banish. Banish. I like Banish, though. Well, I mean, it's only got one in, and usually... No, oh, Banjo has one. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was two. Spell anyway. It. Words. <laughs> hard. It is a three and a white instant common. Um, you exile target creature with power four or greater. Yeah. So this is typically um, pretty bread and butter as far as limited sets go. There's always one of these. It's relatively uh, high costed as far as removal goes, and it has this condition on there. What's usually either tied to a creature's power or its toughness having to be a condition before it actually can target it. Um, this is pretty simple, simplified stuff here. This is a solid two. You'll play it in most of your white decks. Um, as we've seen with a lot of the uh, the bigger threats in this set, there are just giant monsters. And so I would say probably 90% of the games you play against, be it limited or um, sealed or draft, you will have a target for this. Um, so I'm happy to play at least one of these, maybe two, depending on the, uh, the format and how it shakes out. But uh, this is uh, bread and butter, good stuff. Removal's always good. Removal's always good. All right, what do we got next? We have this handsome fellow. Checkpoint Officer. He is one in a white. He is a creature, human, soldier, common. You can pay one in a white and tap it for tapping target creature. Oh, and it's a one-two. Um, yeah, this is pretty, again, this is sort of, you know, just sort of like just generically good stuff here. Um, I think back to Gideon's Lawkeeper, which was a 1-1 one, one for one white mana that only took one white mana and tapping it to actually tap target creature. Um, that thing's probably too good by magic design standpoints nowadays. Uh, but this card's perfectly fine. The body is pretty inconsequential, but if you can come down, if you come down early, um, no matter if you're playing an aggressive deck or a more sort of mid rangey deck that wants to keep the board sort of under control... Um, something like this can get in for a couple points of damage early and then switch to a more defensive role where you're actually going to use the ability to tap down of your opposing creatures and clear your way for a solid attack. So this one got a two for me as well. This is um, 
pretty necessary, but unexciting at best. Alright, here are some happy guys. It's a boy band. Uh, there's a chick. And a chick. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pop group from the, uh, the 1950s, or the 1490s. They look like they're full of teen angst. <laughs> this is Coordinated Charge. It is four and a white. It is an instant common. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Or you can cycle it for two, I think. Yep. That's two. what that means. Yep. First time, new. <laughs> anyway, pay two, discard this card, and draw a card. Yeah. So <laughs> cycling is one of the huge mechanics in this set and gives cards um, greater flexibility that would otherwise be dead in your hand. Um, if like this is a good example of just having something that if you just don't have the mana to cast it or you need to find something else like let's say a land, uh, especially in a three color set that becomes pretty imperative. This is a good way to get to it. And the effect is it's significant for limited, especially at common. Typically you see bigger effects like this, more so in green actually. They give a much broader effect and usually have an additional ability like trampled set stapled on. Um, but as far as your aggressive go wide decks, there's this token-y sub-theme for white, mostly human-based, um, that this could easily turn a game in your favor. Um, you know, you send a couple of uh, attackers in, your opponent doesn't block, or they do block, and this gets you the edge in combat. This is pretty serviceable here. Um, not typically what I like to be doing in Limited, um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's serviceable. I guess a 1.5, it's, it's, it's unexciting, but cycling is a pretty predominant f um, factor in this set, so I can see that being a um, couple points in its favor. All right, what do we got next? Aw, it's a kitty <laughs> with a big horn. I, I should note that we've instituted a, an additional um, column in our notes over here. It is the awe factor. So whenever you hear Sam over here just lose her mind over a card, it's awe factor. Awe factor. <laughs> this one is Cub Warden. Aw. <laughs> Look at the little cubs back there. They're so cute. Anyway, it is three and a white. Is it creature cat? And I believe that is rare. That is rare, yes. Yes, got it. Um, it has lifelink, and whenever this creature mutates, create two one one white cat words, white cat creature tokens with lifelink. It is a three five. You can mutate it for two and two white. Yeah, and so <laughs> mutating puts the if you cast it for its mutates cost, you put it over or under target non-human. Non-humans is important because humans apparently cannot turn into this, which makes sense. Um, and then they mutate into the creature on top plus all abilities from underneath it, and they have power up with the creature on top of it. So that's kind of what mutate does, and it's the big showcase mechanic for this set. Uh, this thing is pretty nuts. Um, by itself, either the three, three and white or two white white is a reasonable cost um, for a 3-5 lifelinker. I, I think more often than not, you will be mutating if you have the ability to do so. Um, obviously, there is a risk-reward system going on here, because if they kill one, they kill both. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, just because the costs are completely equal, say, for the colored mana cost, I think you're pretty much going to be, like I said, always mutating this onto something and getting those tokens out of it, and more lifelink is always good. Um, I'll say this one time for the lifelinking. Um, there is this theory that a friend of mine told me about. This has been years since my buddy Todd told me about this, but there is this notion that most limited decks are only designed to deal about 20 points of damage in a game of limited, um, and they'll just run out of gas at that point. And if you can build your deck to be resilient and require, let's say, 25 upwards of 30 points of damage before you die, you're in good shape because you'll have outlasted all of your opponent's threats. So that's not become, hasn't really become sort of like the absolute of every limited format, but I have seen that some decks just, you know, they start to peter out as you're hanging by a couple of points of life and you're continuing to draw bigger threats and their cards just can't handle anymore. So your mileage might vary with that statement, but that's what it is. Uh, the cup board in here is a, is a solid three. Though. This is a very good go wide threat. It it's a kitty cat oh. that makes more kitty cats. <laughs> So many cats. All right, what do we have next here? We have Day Squad Marshall. I wonder where the Night Squad is. Uh, it's three and well, there white. Well, the, there's the black cards. Oh, really? I don't think that's a card, actually. Oh. There is no Night Squad Marshall. Well, that's a little silly. <laughs> he looks prissy at, at AF. That's <laughs> a big sword. Uh-huh, but he looks prissy. Um, anyway, Day Squad Marshall, three and white. <laughs> it's a creature human soldier at common. 
Uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. When Day Squad Marshal enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. That was important, important for for, snack, <laughs> for, uh, for your, uh, your new commander deck. Uh-huh. Yep. So this one is 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 decent. The fact that you're getting a 3-3 three, three for 4 mana is Hill Giant stats, and the fact that it brings in an additional threat to go with it is certainly you know additional value and if you are playing cards like coordinated charge or other effects that pump up your whole team uh this can be pretty important and there's a couple of payoff cards in white that reward you for having lots of humans in play um so this is pretty decent here i gave it a two it's it's certainly nothing that ex exciting um but it's a pretty decent mid curve um filler for uh for any white deck i think next up Divine Arrow. Divine Arrow. Sorry, I like looking at the art to see like, what's <laughs> going on. Like, it's really cool. It looks like it's pulling something out of its butt, though. Um, oh, that's the spell that like went through. Okay, got it. <laughs> Divine... Oh, it's an arrow. Okay, got it. <laughs> One in a white instant. It's been a really long day for both of us. One in a white instant at common. Divine Arrow deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. I, I, I like the spell. This has been printed uh, a couple of times or different variants of this. I think we saw this last in War of the Spark. Um, but this is, this is pretty solid um, effects here um, to be able to play this on offense and defense. This is more akin to a combat trick than it is a removal spell. Um, but for the most part, this takes down a good number of, of threats in the format, uh, especially if you can, you know, block to go along with it. You can usually certainly kill something a lot stronger than that. But this is a solid two. It's bread and butter removal in white. Um, you know, you're not going to get just flat out destroy target creature without some sort of uh, caveat for white. So this is this is good as is. Um, you're not going to be playing too many of these in your deck, but I certainly don't mind having, you know, at least two copies when playing something a little bit more mid-rangey. Or that one that wants to clear out smaller threats and then stick a bigger threat. So good stuff, and you know it's blowing up a butt. <laughs> All right, what do we have next here? Draneth Hiller, one and a white creature, human cleric at common. It is a two-two, and whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life. You can cycle it for one, discard this card, and draw a card. Yeah, so this is a really good example of a card that is good in both the early and the late game. Um, typically, your two mana two twos are always playable, and to have additional effects put on them, so this cycling ability that will gain you life is pretty solid. Um, and the ability to cycle this as well gives it some extra flexibility as well. So if you draw this on like turn seven and you need to find your, your giant dragon or your Godzilla monster or whatever it's going to be, um, spending two mana to get rid of this and draw a new card is certainly serviceable. Uh, and there are, there's a decent number of cards that actually count the number of cycling cards that are in your graveyard. So to have this, you know, give added value to those cards later on in the game uh, makes, makes this thing pretty serviceable. I gave the uh, healer here a two. It's a twofer. Twofer. All right. You got healers. This thing yeah. reminds me of Doctor Strange. It kind of does. Draineth Magistrate. Yeah. One I and like a white. That. He is a creature human wizard at rare. He is a one three. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Yeah. So I did a quick rundown of the set, and unless I missed something completely... Um, the, there's only one card that this actually hits, and it's Brakos, the Sultai legendary that can be mutated from the graveyard. Um, and since that is a cast trigger or casting, that is a, a casting of a spell, that's the only card that's actually hits. So this is basically just a two mana one three, unfortunately. So um, this doesn't block them from playing commanders. So so I know that we're not. Yeah, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. You know, this this hoses so much more in other formats. Um, but from a limited perspective, this just this world line of text just will not come up all that often. Um, but but you're absolutely right. This stops commanders from being cast out from the command zone. Um, this stops things in you know other formats from being cast from the graveyard. This this has a lot of utility, just not unlimited. So. It's not a great rare to open. It's not terribly powerful. I give it a 1.5 simply because the body is decent. And from there, it's that's about it. Yeah, Basically, just all flavor text. And that's okay sometimes. All right. Next, we have Fight as One. And it's a kitty. Oh. 
Yes, this, I did give this the, uh... The whole factory. <laughs> oh, look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's so cute. That was good, kitty. It's a weird, it's an odd definition of cute. What does this card do? <laughs> it is one white. It is an instant at uncommon. You choose one or both. I never know why you would only choose one if it gives you the option to choose both. Well, if you only have one, you can only choose one. This is true, I guess. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, target human creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Uh, and or target non-human creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains indestructible until end of turn. This card is insane. Yep. This is just genuinely absurd. Um, as, as you mentioned... Why would you only choose one when you can obviously, um, you know, meet both conditions? It's kind of the idea here, um, and there, you know, you can certainly build your deck to do that. But even just one half of this for one mana is pretty insane. Um, the fact that it can be done both on the attack and the block is super important here. This this card is just incredibly powerful. This is a two point five. Basically, any white deck will play a copy of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and is even is much more better suited in a more aggressive deck that just wants to turn creatures sideways, cast a few pump spells, and blank a blank a, uh, a removal spell with this. This card is probably good enough to see standard play in some kind of white aggressive decks. But here, limited. This card is just card insane. Moving on. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Look, it's so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Flourishing Fox. It is one white. It is a creature fox at uncommon. It is a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Whenever you cycle another card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Flourishing Fox. You can cycle it for one. Nice. So this is another one of those cards, kind of like the uh, the Draineth Healer, that plays a kind of dual role, depending on when it's drawn and what point in the game you're in. Um, this is going to be at its best in a cycling deck because one mana one ones are, are just, you know, they're not going to do much beyond like turn two or three other than cute little pose. <laughs> look at its tail. Well, it's like there's even smaller ones I down know. there in the corner. <laughs> but its tail is so fluffy. Um, but, but yeah, this is, a, this, is a, this is a really good card in a dedicated cycling deck. So if you're drafting... Um, a deck like that for the set this is going to be a great first pick and then you start taking all the cycling cards that you can because this thing will get huge um, and if it had any kind of evasion on it which you could easily put it on with one of the keyword counters um, be it first strike trample flying what have you this thing can get easily get out of control um, it's pretty solid but uh, I gave this one a solid two and it's definitely more in the build around category mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it, they just keep oh, coming. Look at the fluffers. <laughs> oh, Garrison a, cats. Yep. Words right out of my mouth. <laughs> it is one white. It is a creature cat at common. Yep. Ha, almost said uncommon, but that's black. Anyway, it is a 1-1 one, one. when Garrison cat dies. Create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. I completely disagree with that card. Cats are better than humans. Sure, but this card is bad. <laughs> yeah, not 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 all that impressive unless you are in a a hyper aggressive white deck that wants to play one of these. Have a cup, have you know multiple copies of this that can just play multiple one drops in a turn. Have them die, replaced by other by the token that it creates. Um, but this just gets outclassed way too quickly in this set when you've got, you know, 11 11s that exist here. This is, unfortunately, as cute as it is, this is just a one. I agree. When you replace a cat with a human. Well, there you go. Oh my god, All right. flying squirrel. That is a nightmare flying squirrel. Him is not a nightmare. Uh, it's got six legs. Helica glider. It is two <laughs> and a white. It's so cute. A creature, Nightmare Squirrel, forget the Nightmare because it's adorable, sure. it is common, it is a 2-2, Helica Glider enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a first strike counter on it, so see it doesn't have to fly. It doesn't have to, but I think more often than not it will fly. Um, being a 2-2 first striker is not 
all that great. Um, that being said, if you want to play it more defensively and your opponent has a lot of smaller bodies that this can first strike and just kind of hold the ground with, that's probably its best application. But for the most part, I'm going to put this thing on flying mode and just turn it sideways. I gave the glider here. It's a solid two. I like that it has versatility like this and just kind of lets you, it really ties into that theme of building your own monster. Um, you know, especially if you were able to mutate onto this, all of a sudden your 6-6 six, six trampler is a, a flying 6-6 six, six trampler, for instance. So this, this is this is pretty cool. And he looks like he's yelling, coming in hot! Like, he, he looks like he's like, sorry, anyway. Anyway. I thought this was They just keep coming. Hunt faster <laughs> Liger, look at all the kitties. It is three and white. It's a creature cat at uncommon. It is a three, four. Whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. You can mutate it for two and a white. Yep. Uh, this is another good example of the risk versus reward kind of uh, nature of these cards going here. Um, in a very aggressive go wide white deck, I will always mutate this thing first onto whatever target I have. The fact that it's giving both a power and a toughness boost is just awesome. And this thing can just easily turn a battle battle in your in your favor. This is a 2.5 for me. Um, if I'm ever casting this for its you know, base CMC, the game is probably not going well for, for me at least. Yeah. Mutate just seems to be always a better option if you can, so. Super cute. Very. All right, what do we got next? Imposing Vantasaur. That thing is so freaking cute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is a five and a white creature dinosaur at common. It has vigilance, and you can cycle it for one. It is a three, six. That's a hefty boy. It, it is a hefty boy. And there's, there's actually a card in here that we'll get to here in just a minute um, that lets you assign common damage for toughness rather than power, which makes this thing absolutely terrifying. Um, by itself, though, I'm not super high on this card. I gave it a two. Uh, the ability to go, you know, technically offensively defensive with its vigilance makes this thing pretty decent. And if you are in a white base sort of mid range, maybe you're in like white blue or white black, and this is kind of your top end, this is a pretty decent way to go about that. You know, this is going to be able to block most things on the ground. Um, and if you've got, you know, a good number of removal spells to back it up, I could see this thing being a not great win condition, but if you didn't pick one up in the course of a draft or you didn't open anything in your sealed pool, this could be serviceable, but I'm certainly not impressed by this card all that much. This is a solid two, but not much beyond that. Next up. Keen Sight Mentor. It is two and a white creature human cleric. There's a wild monkey in the picture with it. Yep. <laughs> it is uncommon. It's a 1-4. When Keen Sight Mentor enters the battlefield, put a vigilance counter on target non-human creature you control. You can pay one and a white and tap it. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with vigilance. Yeah. It's a 1-4. I, I have to imagine that the, the mentor was taking like was setting up like her timer on her camera for like a really cool selfie. And then this monkey just came out of nowhere and sold the camera. Maybe it's the monkey's camera. Maybe it's the monkey's camera. Maybe he wanted a selfie and mm -hmm. she's just like photobombing. Maybe, maybe it's the monkey's camera. Okay. <laughs> so there's a couple of cards in white that have this sort of cares about vigilance thing going on here. And your ability to put vigilance counters on your creatures actually gives this thing some flexibility. Um, being a 1-4 means it's going to be able to soak up some damage pretty early on. And if it can just start tapping itself and making your other vigilant threats bigger, kind of like the Vantasaur, um, this thing could probably get out of control pretty quickly. And if you have the ability to flicker or bounce this at any point and get another vigilance counter on another non-creature you control, this thing can get out of control pretty quickly here. It's a bit of a build around me card, but I think once it gets going, there's a lot of advantage to be gained from it. This is a solid two, borderline 2.5 in the right deck. Next up, we're playing a little hot potato. The floor is lava. I was literally going to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. Lava! Anyway. I stole the joke. Lava Brink Venturer. Two and a white. Buzzkill. Creature Human Soldier at rare. It is a 3-3. As Lava Brink Venturer enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. Zero is even, by That's the way. That's important. <laughs> Lava Brink Venturer has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. 
This card is weird. Very. Um, this we first saw something like this in um, Theros Beyond Death, which with the card I'm forgetting now, but it was the white, white, red, red six one that you chose a number and it had protection from all but that CMC, if I'm remembering it correctly. Um, so this is a really interesting card, and I like that you have the ability to sort of tailor its effectiveness on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So if your opponent has a bunch of odd drops, you can obviously block those, and same for even. The only downside to this is that if you are attacking, let's say that, that you chose odd, and you attack into a bunch of you know, one drops, and you try and cast the fight as one, you can't target it with your own spells. <laughs> so don't put yourself in a situation where you can't use your pump effects to save this thing or get through for some extra damage. But other than that, this card is really good here. This is a 2.5. Um, on the right battlefield, this will absolutely dominate a game very quickly. Next up. Light of Hope. It is one white instant common. You choose one. You gain four life, destroy target enchantment, or put a... Plus one, plus one counter on target <laughs> creature. <laughs> I can never get the positioning absolutely right of doing that. But yeah. Um, so this card basically... It, it, like... Three years ago, this would have said destroy target enchantment or gain four life. You know, nowadays you get three different choices for your white mana. Um, one of the very first... Um, from the boon cycle, one of the very first cycles of magic ever back in alpha... Um, was Healing Salve, which was one white instant to gain three life. <laughs> oh. So we have come quite far uh, for your mana. And, and a card like this would typically be regulated to the sideboard, <laughs> um, but giving the flexibility to destroy enchantments or put one plus one plus one counters on creatures gives us a lot of flexibility depending on the board state. Even the gain for life has some play to it against more aggressive decks. Um, but as we've seen a lot recently, there's always a decent number of both uncommon and rare enchantments that absolutely require being answered in a game of limited. Um, so having a card like this will absolutely, you know, if, if you're basically, if you're scrapping for like your 23rd playable in a, in a deck of limited, this will absolutely make the cut. It's not terribly interesting, but the flexibility to get you out of a jam is certainly there. So not exciting, but... There, you have you some hope to win. I see what you did there. You said, yeah, yeah. Funny play on words. Uh huh. <laughs> Aww, it's so pretty. Luminous Broodmoth. It is two and a white and a white. It is a creature insect at mythic. Mm -hmm. ha. Three, four, <laughs> flying. Whenever a creature you enter. Oh, whoa, bit. Nope. Yeah. Let's try that again. <laughs> Whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. This card is insane. Yep. Yeah, just like baseline stats alone, three, four flyers for four is just good stuff. Um, and this whole recycling of creatures that die, just it, 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 like, obviously it's a target for removal. Um but it's just going to put you in a position like, if I play this, if I'm playing a more aggressive white deck or even a, a mid rangey white deck and I just slam this, I can just turn my creature sideways with impunity because there's no way my opponent's going to want me to block or to block my creatures for fear of them dying and then coming back com basically unblockable at some point. And if there's any room to back this thing up, this is going to absolutely dominate games. Um, the only downside is that it, it's not the biggest thing in the pool. <laughs> So it's good, and it just has that little bit extra of a hoop to jump through before it really gets going. Um, but by, by itself, you know, this is a solid three here. I'll be happy to take this for any white that I'm playing. There's always a bigger monster. There's always a bigger monster. Always. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Majestic Aracorn. Yep. It's a four and a white creature unicorn. Uncommon. It has Vigilance. Whenever this creature mutates, you gain four life. It is a 4-4. Four, four. You can mutate it for three and a white. Yeah, I'm not super impressed by this thing. <laughs> but it's so cute. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly majestic, that's for sure. Um, the life gain is nice. The Vigilance is nice. Um, this is one of the... I, I like that you can... This is obviously a little more defensively minded here. Um... I'm just not super excited about this card at all, actually. It's 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 a two. I don't have much to say about this one. <laughs> just 
It's friends with birds. Hey, friends with birds. <laughs> it's it's a generic beater, and that's about it. The life gain is really just meh. All right, moving on. <laughs> Main serval, one and a white creature cat, common. It's a one four with vigilance, and it's so freaking cute. It is, it is cute. I have to agree with that. Um, there's not a lot going on here, unfortunately, for the serval. Um, yeah, I gave it a one point five. You know, we're, we always get these kind of creatures. It's a relatively cheap CMC for a high toughness, low power, vigilant threat. It's good for blocking early in the game. Um, Blue-white control decks for limited might want cards like this. They can go on the offensive every once in a while, but it's going to soak up some damage once you set up your late game. Not all that exciting otherwise. Can I have one? If we open one, sure. Or do you want that thing in general? I want the kitty. No, we can't have that. Look at it. He just wants pets. He's got a mohawk. I, he does have a mohawk. I tried to give Fritz a mohawk. He has one. Yeah, I did try to give our dog a mohawk. <laughs> Moving on. Ooh. <laughs> Mythos of Snapdax. Two white white sorcery at rare. <clears throat> a lot of text here. There's a lot of text on these mythoses. Each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents they control. Are you following me here? Yep. Then sacrifices the rest. If red black was spent to cast this spell, you choose the permanents for each player instead. Wow. Yeah. So, unfortunately, this hits your stuff as well, which is a major downside to it. Um, so, we, we have to look at this as kind of like a modal spell. Uh, obviously, this is a three-color set. We have plenty of fixing to you know give you the ability to pay the full three colors for this spell. Baseline, just the white mana. It's pretty good, and it sits somewhere around a two. Um, simply because it's going to leave, more than likely, you know, it's going to leave you behind a, a mana rock and a creature, and the same for your opponent in most cases. And it's going to be just like who had the better threat. So hopefully that they don't have something better than what your threat is for you to capitalize on the advantage here. Now, if you manage to play all three colors of mana for this spell, this turns into a game breaking three and a half. And I only dock at that last half point because it's white, white. And this is a that's a tricky mana cost to pull off unlimited, um, but if you can set this up so that you pick their little one one token versus your six six killer of worlds, pretty good. This card is very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is a solid three point five, probably better than that. Um, just make sure that you can engine in the situation to get the maximum benefit of this out of it. Good stuff. Kitty. Big kitty. <laughs> Pacifism. Ah, classics. One in white. Enchantment aura. Common. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't block or attack. I said that backwards, but it's still the same it's thing. It's the same thing, yeah. Uh, this card is always good. Um, there's never been a limited set where you will not play this. Um, the only downside is that they can still activate their abilities, which can be problematic. Um, but it's cards like this that necessitate things like, what was it, Light of Hope? Um, to be able to destroy enchantments like this that are just, you know, sort of, you know, just problematic enough to be an issue and, and need to be dealt with. Um, but yeah, this is a solid two. It's a bread and butter limited card, and that's about it. I would love to know what's going on in that picture. Uh, I can't tell if it's drugged, because, I mean, enchantment... Well, no, the butterfly and is the, what did it. I don't know, but, like, is, is, the, like, is the thing... Oh, never mind. No, I think the butterfly just knocked this beast out. Brains. Just cold. Oh, All right. Oh, th this word. <laughs> Patagia, Patagia. Patagia? Patagia. <laughs> it's a tiger. That much we know. It's four and white. It's a creature cat. At common, it is three, four, flying. When that tiger <laughs> enters the battlefield, target human you control gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. It, it sounds like, like a kind of food. Like, do you want to go get some Patagia tonight? Or, or make some patagia. Anyway. It sounds like a type of pasta. It really does. Or some kind of like an ethnic Middle Eastern kind of food. Mm. Yeah. But um, 
Any, anyway, uh, this card is perfectly fine. Uh, five mana, three, four flyers are typically always playable in limited. And for the little bit of boost of damage that you get from just casting it, that's pretty reasonable too here. Um, it's not going to let the world on fire, but um, I, I do like this card a decent amount. It's a solid two. Um, I'm looking to play this more of a mid-rangey uh, control white deck here. Um, and if I don't get that bonus ability to get to go plus two plus two, eh, I won't be super upset about it because I'm just going to beat down the air with the uh, the pasta cat. Pasta cat, <laughs> I like it. It's what I will forever call it. All right, what do we have next here? Perimeter sergeant, two and white. I don't know what they're doing with that kitty, but I don't like it. They're attacking it. I don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Creature, human, soldier, common. It's a 3-2. Whenever perimeter sergeant attacks other humans you control, get plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. Yeah, don't read the flavor text. Um, but this card is decent. Uh, it definitely requires you to have a nice ward bite, nice wide board state to actually get any advantage out of it. The stats alone are nothing impressive. We see this card, you know, this, this stat line, I should say, plenty of times. And if I'm playing a more aggressive white deck, and this is, I've got a copy or two of this on my, at the top of my curve, maybe a couple of four drops to go beyond it, it's serviceable. Um, but unfortunately, it does get traded down with quite often with only two toughness. So, eh, nothing great. Yeah, mean humans to the cats. Just not cool. Not Sanctuary cool. Lockdown. Two and a white enchantment at uncommon. Yep. Humans you control get plus one, plus one. You can pay two, tap two, untapped human. Nope. Let's try it again. <laughs> pay two, tap two, untapped humans you control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Yeah, there, there's a lot of text here for, for what I would feel is not a lot of advantage. The effect I'm more looking at here is just the plus one, plus one to my humans. Um, and I, with the, the nice thing here is that, you know, this, this probably won't go very far in sealed where you can't guarantee that you're going to have a bunch of humans to go with it. But if you're playing draft and you've picked up a bunch of humans in the early picks of your packs, and this comes around late, because no one's going to pick this first and, and say, I'm going to draft the human deck. This is something that you take once you're in the human deck. This can become pretty potent and is a build around me for that very reason. Um, but just, you know, in any other non-draft deck where you're able to be able to engineer your picks and your deck around this, this is super underwhelming, and having to put so much into tapping one creature really just makes me want to play the, um, the the checkpoint officer instead. So I'm not super impressed with this one. It's a B, and yeah, will be nothing more than that. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Kitty, you get ready to pounce. Uh, <laughs> Savai, Savia, Sa no, Savai, Savai. I don't know Savai. Savai, saber tooth. One white creature cat at common, and it is a 3-1. Generic. We get a dozen of these every set, it feels like. I, Call the, it kitty generic. The, cat is, the card is generic. <laughs> the cat itself is a majestic beast of nobility and strength. Um, but, Just joshing, but yeah. But yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see this card a dozen times, and we'll see it a dozen times more in the next couple sets. Uh, three ones are only good on aggressive decks, and there is a point where they just become so outclassed that I'd rather have a one three instead. Um, one point five for me, not that impressive. Next up, ten out of ten. It had an all factor of cute though. It did, yes. Snare tactician, two and a white creature, human soldier, common. It is a two three, and whenever you cycle a card, tap target creature and opponent controls. I like this. Definitely has a, a strong build around me component, much like the Flourishing Fox does. Um, obviously, you want a high density of cycling cards in your deck to go along with this and make it be as effective as possible. That being said, the body compared to its covered mana cost is actually pretty decent. Two threes are typically pretty good in limited formats, regardless of what the context is. And just having the ability to end of your opponent's turn, cycle a card, get an extra card out of that, and then tap down their biggest threat. Pretty good stuff. This is probably going to be more aggressively minded, um, but I wouldn't say no to a copy or two of this in a more mid-rangey white deck. Ah, here it is. This is the one I keep th I keep thinking about with all these big booty guys. First question <laughs> is, 
what is her pet and where can I get one? It's like a bear, hedgehog, porcupine, cute thing. Well, this is what happens when you tell me with the golden compass with the bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that is, only it, it got roided out. I can't even say that that's all because that's just <laughs> like, whoa. Anyway, it's sorry. It's awesome. Yes, it's awesome. It goes from like awe to awesome. Yeah. Solid footing. It is one white. <laughs> it is an enchantment aura with common. It has yep. flash. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And as long as enchanted creature has vigilance, it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Yeah. So that Vantasaur guy, mm -hmm. all of a sudden he's smacking down for six instead of three. The saving grace of this card is the fact that it has flash. Um, this this is kind of like, you know, this becomes like the test when you're playing games of limited. You know, what trick does my opponent have? They're attacking in with something that's obviously not going to survive combat. What do they have? Something like this is usually a pretty good sort of barometer. Like, this is your baseline test spell um, to make sure you can get your opponent to block or if you're a attacking into something you can get out of it with the spell. The ability to flash it in is quite important here. Um, only getting plus one, plus one is a pretty is pretty down, though, and requiring Vigilance knocks this down a couple points for me. So I give it a 1.5. It's still perfectly playable if you need a combat trick. Um, but beyond that, it's you know you need to have it set up before it actually gets going really anywhere. But the uh, Porky Polar Bear Quill thing is... Noise. Good flavor. All right, next up. Oh my god, it glows. We got more unicorns. Oh goodness gracious, I want to pet it. Look at its tail. Splendor Mare, two and white. <laughs> it is a creature, elk unicorn with a tail. <laughs> It is uncommon. It is a 3-3 three, three with lifelink, and you can cycle it for one and a white. When you cycle Splendor Mare, put a lifelink counter on target creature you control. It has a tail. <laughs> what animals do, babe? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, 3 mana 3-3s three, three are always playable. 3 mana 3-3s three, with lifelink, also playable always. Um, the ability to put a lifelink counter on the on another creature you control is is pretty significant especially if you're in a damage racing situation where you're coming down to just like points of life of damage will decide the game this has a lot of good flexibility built into it so i do like this one quite a bit i give it a 2 2.5 um this this card's serious business all factor 10 all factor 10 <laughs> Goodness, that just broke the scale. She's only seen these cards for like the first time ever today. Oh my goodness. That one broke the scale. Like it doesn't get any cuter. Spontaneous flight. Oh my god, it's like trying to fly. Oh my goodness. It's oh no, it did fly. It is flying. It is two two and a white instant common. Target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Put a flying counter on it. Yeah. This is good stuff. This is good on offense, good on defense to get a surprise block in the air when they weren't expecting it. Um, spells like this in the past would have given it flying for a turn, but the ability to keep it flying is actually pretty impressive here. And a plus two, plus two bonus is, is definitely, um, certainly powerful. And yes, the art is freaking adorable. And this will look hella good in foil. The flavor text is so adorable. Yeah. Amazing, and I was only trying to teach her to sit. Like, is a weird place. Like, can you imagine, like, raising a dog and just one morning it has wings and it's breathing fire everywhere? Let's go to Icoria. Let's go to Icoria. <laughs> um, so this is a solid two for me. It's a great combat trick. Like I mentioned, it's good on offense and defense for surprise block in the air. And to keep the creature flying is definitely good stuff as well. You know, this is something that you would might see on an equipment and only give it flying, so... This is pretty good stuff here, and yes, the art is absolutely adorable. M the most beneficial and probably a very aggressive deck. Um, not much, a lot, of, not a lot of utility in a more mid-range or control deck. <laughs> this card just disturbs me on so many levels. I can't say that's cute, but it's funny. Looking. It's so weird. It's so ugly. It's cute. 
Stormwild uh, Caprador. <clears throat> yeah. Two and a white creature bird goat. <laughs> it is an uncommon with one three and flying. If non-combat damage would be dealt to Stormwild Caprador, prevent that damage. Put a plus one plus one counter on Stormwild Caprador for each one damage prevented this way. It's it's an impressive ability. Um, I don't know just how often that's going to happen. At most, I can see this getting to be like a 2-4, maybe a 3-5. Um, there's a lot of really bad memes about this card online saying like, bolt me daddy. Um, but we're not going to talk about those. The, the, this thing is a 1. I'm not impressed with this card in the slightest. What online have you been looking on at for Facebook. those kind of memes? I'm, <sighs> Moving on, don't like this card <laughs> at all. I do not like this one bit. Next up. <laughs> Swallow Hole. It is one white sorcery uncommon. As an additional cost of this spell, tap an untapped creature you control. You can exile target tapped creature. Put a plus one plus one counter on the creature tapped to pay. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> tapped to pay this spell's additional cost. Yeah, th there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, but the fact that you're one exiling the creature and getting a bonus of a counter on it is seriously impressive stuff here. Um, the biggest thing that hurts this is that it's at sorcery speed. If it was a, if it was at instant speed, this probably goes to rare. Um, and I think it's probably still fine at that point too, but not, that's not the point here. Um, this is good. This is really powerful removal here. Um, even if you, even if you can't attack the creature the turn that you tapped it to reap the benefits of the bonus here, I don't think you're worried about it that much. Basically unconditional removal in white is very very powerful here stuff especially if you can exile something that's been mutated and get you know a two three health and forbid a four for one off of this this is serious business here very very powerful removal i gave us a solid 2.5 it's also a giant kitty that's swallowing him whole yes it is <laughs> valiant rescuer it is one white. There's a dinosaur back there. Yep. Uh, creature, human, soldier, uncommon. It's a 3-1. Whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. And you can cycle it for cycle two. Cycle it for two as well. Yeah. Um, so again, this is another one of those cards that wants to be in the cycling deck like the fox. Um, like I'm forgetting the other card now. The... Um... Fox? Yeah, the flourishing fox. And then there was the other one that... Um... Other one that wants to be cycled, but anyway, um, the the healer guy that gains you life. Yeah, so obviously there is a, a cycling archetype in this set, obviously, um, and if you can get all of these guys in it and start cycling away your less effective spells, you can get a good amount of value out of this guy. The fact that you're only doing it, be able to do it once per turn does detract quite a bit here. Um, now, if you're able to cycle on your turn and then your opponent's turn, there, there's some value to be to be had from that, but. Being only a 3-1 really kind of hurts us a bit, um, but if you're able to cycle as defensive plays and make the tokens to block with and just use your fodder that way before you're digging towards your more impactful spells, I can see the the, the, the place for this creature in the cycling deck. Um, it's a solid 2 for me. I like the guy. Oh, Doctor Strange. Draneth Healer. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Doctor Strange. Yeah, sorry. All right, next up. Oh my goodness. It's a... <laughs> Vulpikeet. <laughs> it's a three and a white creature fox bird it is a common two three with flying whenever this creature mutates put a plus one plus one counter on it and you can mutate it for two and a white yep again risk reward of having a cheaper mutate cost as opposed to its regular cmc um i'm happy to cast this just as a four mana two three flyer mm -hmm. like that's perfectly fine um, but if you do have the ability to put it on something else and start beating down for more damage, um, I, I think the, the quick burst of damage, especially on, you know, turn three or four when this when starts to hit, this could be pretty um, pretty powerful, pretty potent, I think. Uh, Vulpaki give it a solid two. More aggressive than anything. Uh, putting it anywhere else, you're probably not going to get a ton of uh, mileage out of it. And our last white card... Mm. Goodness, he's so mad. Revenge of the Big Cat. <laughs> yes. Will of the All Hunter. That just sounds like rawr. One and a white instant uncommon. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until... Oh, it's a mad kitty. 
Yeah. <laughs> Target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. If it's blocking, instead put two plus one, plus one counters on it. That's yeah. random. Uh, cycling, you can cycle it for two. Oh, one is a counter, and the other one's plus... Okay. Yeah, th that, that tripped me up too <laughs> here at first, but this card is pretty insane as well. It's up there with Fight as One. It's probably being the two best combat tricks in the set so far. Um, I like this one a little bit better because it does put those counters on permanently. Um, but just the ability to play this offensively and defensively makes your opponent really have to second guess, you know, what happens after combat, you know, when now they're five with their, their four fours out of six, six or whatever, you know, what's left behind could just be a disaster for you. So I like having this on offense. I like it a little bit more on defense as, as well. Um, a lot of good stuff here. Um, the downside of having it to be of having it have to block is sort of the only downside here. But this is powerful stuff here. Of course, it cycles as well. So, snap yeah, snap decks get beaten down, and that is the end of our white cards. One down. Uh, let's see: blue, black, red, green, gold, artifacts, and lands. We're gonna be busy. <laughs> But that's okay. So, uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope, you know, I usually am a little bit more monotonous when I do this, so having Sam here make this a lot more entertaining. So I hope you guys are enjoying her presence as new co-host here. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let us know down in the comments what your favorite cards are in the set, what cards you're hoping to open for your drafts, your arena, your arena events, your in-store pre-releases. Uh, if there are any cards you're excited to build with for decks in general, love to know that in the comments as well. And of course, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll be back later this week with more Ikoria Limited Set Review. Have a great night. <laughs>